Come, Nerevar, come. It has been a while since we've talked about gods. However, we have never spoken about them together like this. We will go over each and every false god, saint, deity, and spirit available in the Elder Scrolls universe. If I miss any, write on the parchment down below. Without further delay, let us honor the Sixth House and the tribe unmourned and begin this divine undertaking. Some French Enwa made this tier list so some names might not seem right. Some of these rankings will be controversial and you might not agree with me, but how can you not agree with a god? This is a tier list that truly honors the Sixth House and the tribe unmourned. Let us begin with the false gods of the Nine Divines. We've talked about them for such a prolonged period of time that it is not even funny. So for that reason, let's start the Nine Divines lightning round. As all of you know, Akatosh, the head honcho, is the time dragon that likes to retcon everything with his insanity episodes, also known as Dragon Breaks. He caused the warp in the West during Daggerfall. And he was also the reason why Martin Septim is now a dragon statue, and Tamriel is in chaos. Every time this false god tries to save the world, he makes it much worse. F tier RK is some Enwa that is rumored to have been a mortal priest that became a god, but he seems to be suppressing this information. He is the god of the cycle of life and death and has consistently been undermined by other deities. Seriously, I am a god, but I don't deny that I once was a mortal. He belongs in the F tier. Dibella is, well, basically the goddess of cheating on your significant other and the lusty Argonian maid. If you find a statue of Dibella under your significant other's bed, well, you have to look for another significant other. In her temples, her followers worship her and each other. All in all, she deserves to be in the F tier like the rest of them. Ah, Julianos is the god of knowledge and information storage. He is the internet god of the Elder Scrolls universe. The blind moth priests serve him well. However, how can they read his books if they are blind? He's not a very significant god and a part of the Nine Divines, so F tier. Kinnereth is a nature-loving false god that created a bunch of spriggans to yell at anyone who disturbs nature. She is the eco-activist goddess of Nern, like that one Nord girl you might recognize. I think she is full of herself, and her desire to be Mother Nature is pathetic. She sends the most annoying creatures and expects everyone to respect her. If you've noticed, there is no nature on the Red Mountain. There is a reason for this. I do not like Enwarath, F tier. Next is Mara, the mother goddess. Goddess of love, marriage, and all things that do not honor the sixth house and the tribe unmourned. At least the way she set up the system is foolish. You wear an amulet, and suddenly you are marriage material? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. If that is how it worked, everyone would be married. F tier for foolishness. Stendar is all about law and justice, but he ignores that law and justice are relative and in some parts of Nern, irrelevant. What kind of law and justice is he for? The Enwa Nord justice or the mongrel dog of the Empire justice? To the F tier with him. Talos is just the mongrel dog Tiber Septim who claims to have mantled Lorcan and become a god. Generally, I find Talos to be useless. However, I do acknowledge him being fused with Lorcan. The Stormcloaks are fighting to restore Talos' worship, which I find pointless since worshipping Talos does not give you that many perks. F tier. Now Zenithar, the god of commerce, has the power to protect Tamriel from communism. Seriously, his followers claim he is vital because he is the deity of trade. There are also claims that he played a role in the warp in the West. However, I do not think he is as relevant as he is portrayed to be. When I am in charge, trade would be unnecessary, so he will become irrelevant. F tier. This is it for the Nine Divines. I have always maintained that they belong in the F tier. I am a god. How dare you question a god? This is an excellent time to remind you to subscribe to my sermons, raise your thumbs, and write on the parchment below. The Nine Divines belong in F tier. We start the Bosmer Pantheon with Ayas, the animal god. He only appears once in Daggerfall, and it was to protect a cow from an Enwa farmer. Then he is gone and never heard from again. No, I will not speak of him for over an hour. Insignificant God, Farm Tool Tier. The Wilder King or the Wilder Queen is both a god and a political figure, apparently, that controls the Greenshade tribes in Valenwood. Any Enwa or Dunmer, but mostly a Bosmer or an Altmer, must mantle the Wilder King for it to exist. Otherwise, they are irrelevant. F tier God. Shagrath is the god of spiders. Yes, she is responsible for most of your creepy crawly nightmares. She is now lost to history. F tier. Alandro Sul was your shield companion, Nerevar, during the War of the First Council. 
After the battle, he lived with the Ashlanders and is credited with spreading the belief among them that the tribunal murdered your predecessor, Nerevar. The ghost snake is also revered by the Ashlanders, and it is responsible for a bunch of fetch quests. I understand the Ashlanders are Dunmer, but this thing is a farm tool. Ah, now we get to the Daedra. They are all just minor annoyances. However, I respect them more than the Nine Divines. I think Azura is a petty, narcissistic, evil, and incompetent goddess. She was given immense power and authority, but she's done nothing with it except run around meddling in the lives of mortals and making herself feel important by helping people who never asked for her help in the first place. Even though she has done nothing to stop the horrible things in the world, she still thinks that everyone should worship her. She is a vain, egomaniacal parasite, and there is no one in the world I hate more because she directed you to destroy the heart. However, due to her power, I have to give her the C-tier. Barbus, the sometimes dog, sometimes scamp, serves Clavicus Vile, who doesn't really care about him that much. I think he's a harmless idiot. He isn't really dangerous, and his interference is always trivial. He's kind of funny, though, so I like him. However, that doesn't change the fact that he is a farm tool. Boethia is a god who appreciates the irony of fate, and a god who rewards violence and brutality. A fascinating deity, to be sure, but one who rewards brutality and not wisdom or intelligence. She, occasionally he, is not my cup of tea. However, it is almost entertaining to watch the sacrifices of Enwaz. C-tier. Hermaeus Mora is a curious deity, but one who appreciates the pursuit of knowledge above all else. For an intelligent and curious mind, he makes a decent patron. But he is not much of a fighter, and he is not the first deity I would look to for help in combat. What good does all that knowledge do if you fall to the edge of a blade? The Apocrypha is also a very boring realm full of tentacles. He is the Daedra version of Julianus. I will give him a generous B tier. I think Hercene is a petty, spiteful, and childish god. He is an embarrassment to all the Daedra. I can hardly stand to think of him. He sulks, like a child who has been told to put off his favorite game and work on his chores. And yet he demands to be worshipped as a powerful and fierce god. Ridiculous. He has little to offer the mortal world beyond hunting and predation. His sphere is also very limited, as he only claims power over a particular variety of creatures which are basically furry farm tools. He belongs with them in the farm tool tier. Jigalag. The Daedric Prince of Order is a mindless monster who has become an even more mindless and dangerous monster through his eternal curse. He does become sane once the hero of Kavach mantles Sheogorath, but he is a dull and boring machine. My pity to anyone who has to interact with the Prince of Order. I am doing what he is doing, but better. At least I will have a mind, and my followers are not complete robots. However, due to his power, he belongs in the C-tier. Ah, uh, Trinimac and Malakath, the never-ending poop joke. He keeps shamelessly appearing on these tier lists, thinking I will put him above the F-tier. Trinimac was once Boethia's dinner that, well, later became Malakath. You do the math, Nerevar. However, the orcs do respect him, and he does have some valuable artifacts. I think I will give him a chance to earn the F-tier and put him in the farm tool tier, Mephala. Any god to whom the concepts of truth and falsehood are an affront against his will and a weakness to be punished, and Mephala is that god, a god for whom I have no use. I spit on the web upon which she spins. She demands of her followers that which they are unable to give. Like all gods, Mephala has infinite power but no compassion. She has no time for the woes of her faithful but demands that we bow to her and that we thank her for what little she gives. I despise such self-serving cruel gods. D tier. I consider Merun's Dagon to be a clown. He's powerful but has no grander purpose. He likes chaos. And in the end, I'm not sure he's even capable of controlling the chaos he sows. He tried to take over some Enwa school but got stopped by a Harry Potter wannabe. Then the moment he enters Tamriel, he is stopped by the mongrel dog Emperor Martin Septim in the Akatosh Avatar state. He belongs in the F tier. Meridia really wants you to touch her beacon so she can say the words, A new hand touches the beacon. Well, I suggest you don't give her that satisfaction. Yes, Dawnbreaker is a somewhat good artifact, but that's where my respect stops for her. D tier. Molag Bal is the Daedric Prince of Brutality and Domination. He is a false god, but the powers and the connections he offers are impressive. He has a hunger for domination and control that most so-called gods cannot even imagine. Vampires are his creations, a vile and horrid thing. 
He is a God that believes himself an ultimate authority and he demands total obedience. He is powerful, but he has no respect for honor or duty. A God to be avoided by mortals. As to the fact he was defeated, that was a fluke. In most cases, he would have won. He belongs in the B tier. Namira, more like Nom 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 Nomira. She is the Daedric Prince of Decay and feasting on flesh. They can turn any poor Enwa into a meal. I wouldn't want to go to an inn that Namira worshippers are running. Do not try the mystery meat. F tier. Nocturnal is the Daedric Prince of Night and Darkness and is supposedly Azura's sister. The Enwas of the Thieves' Guild, especially the Nightingales, worship her so much that they are willing to give her back the Skeleton Key. I do not think she cares who is a criminal or who is pious, but she wants to reward those who are bold and ruthless. Overall, she is slightly better than Azura, Beatir, Periite, the malformed version of Akatosh, the Prince of Pestilence and Disease. He is weak and pathetic. What does it take to be the Prince of Disease anyway? To cause the common cold? I understand that he has a function on Mundus, but I can also create disease, and I am much better at it than he is. A simple cure disease potion can cure his diseases, while it is difficult to cure mine. He belongs in the farm tool tier. Sanguine is the god of debauchery and the hangover. Sanguine is a boisterous and noisy god. I do not like his style or his followers or the things that he advocates. I have no respect or patience for him. He's always full of hot air and has no interest in philosophy or thought or the fate of the mortal world. He just likes to throw parties and drink and make noise and indulge in petty amusements with his minions. And his followers are almost as silly as he is. F-tier, Sheogorath, the Daedric Prince of Madness. Oh no, please no. Hello, it is me, Sheogorath. Well, how would I describe myself briefly? So I don't take much of Mr. Dagoth Ur's time. I am mad, completely and utterly mad. My favorite emperor, other than that Martin feller, is Pelagius Septum. And I like cheese. The hero of Kvatch mantled me and became me. I'm easily in S tier, and don't you dare put me below that. I have to go now. Good day, I said. Good day. Fine. I'll keep this Enwa in S tier. Moving on, the next deity is Vermina. She represents the fear of the unknown and the forbidden and is therefore a very dangerous Dedric prince. Her realm is a nightmare world where fear and torment rule supreme. If you do visit her, you will find that your mind is filled with many scary, twisted, and frightening thoughts, which will haunt you long after you leave that realm. She is the worst of the Deidre, and it is best to avoid her, or at least avoid her realm at all costs. See tier Clavicus Vile, the Daedric Prince of Bargains who keeps losing Umbra, which in turn keeps possessing different characters, turning them into unstoppable Terminators. He is responsible for flying cities powered by the souls of Enwas, mostly farm tools. He's a weak and pathetic prince that belongs in the F-tier, but something tells me he is going to be a menace in the future. Arden Sewell was the first Duke of the Shivering Isles, and it is unknown what happened to him. Frankly, I don't care. And Sheogorath doesn't either, so he won't mind if I put him in the F-tier. Next we move on to the Dunmer gods, demigods, and saints. Almalexia, a false god who also harnessed the power of the heart. What happens when the heart disappears? A completely unhinged Almalexia. Yes, Nerevar, the wife of your predecessor, loses her godhood and brutally mangles Sotha Sil, and then decides to end you as well. You know what, though? You defeat her and put an end to her millennia-old tyranny. She might claim to be Mother Morrowind, but she's actually the evil stepmother of Morrowind. Seriously, I am glad she's gone, f -tier. Do you hear the divine synth? Ah, Nerevar, we are now talking about me. I am the Sharmat. The one who will use the power of the heart to drive the mongrel dogs of the Empire out of Morrowind. The only real true god that will bring salvation to Morrowind. The leader of the Sixth House. The one who will harness the power of the heart to rid Morrowind of the mongrel dogs of the Empire. Of course, I am talking about myself. I was known as Vorin de Goth, the leader of the Sixth House. I therefore put myself in S tier because I am an actual god, unlike all of these Enwas. Ethan was a Dunmer noble that was active during the early First Era. He is the center of an obscure temple cult that worships him as the god of the wild that was created in homage by his half-brother Morelin, the Witch King of Ebonheart. In death, he was given the duty of safeguarding the Horn of Summoning and eventually the Staff of Chaos. Statues of Ethan depicted him wielding a hammer atop of an anvil of adamantium. 
and shrines dedicated to him have been active since the late Third Era, as far west as the Iliac Bay. He is a Dunmer and is rumored to be a god. I will give him a generous B tier, so the Sil is a betrayer. In league with Vivek and Almalexia, he used the tools of Kagranak to become immortal and then led the Dunmer down the path they have followed until the Tribunal got what it deserved. He has a bit of a conscience due to his vile betrayal of you, Nerevar, here in Red Mountain. However, he is still a false god and takes full advantage of the power of the heart in constructing his clockwork city. I give him the F tier. Vivek sent you to defeat me, Nerevar, and gave you Wraithguard. You refused to give me Wraithguard and used Sunder and Keening to destroy the heart. As a result, Vivek doomed me and himself. He claims to have achieved Chim, but after the heart was destroyed, he vanished just like the Dwemer. Also, yes, Sheagorath was at fault for sending Bar Dao to Morrowind, but Vivek is responsible for keeping Bar Dao where it was, so by proxy, he is primarily responsible for the Red Year. F tier. Saint Aralor the Penitent is the Dunmary patron of Tanner and Miners. He is a saint of the False Tribunal Temple, so he does not precisely honor the Sixth House and the tribe unmourned. However, he is just an inconsequential saint and a Dunmer, so I'll put him in E tier. Saint Delin the Wise is the Dunmary patron of potters and glassmakers. Delin was once the head of House Indural, as well as a skilled lawyer and author of many treatises on tribunal law and custom. I hate tribunal law and custom, but like Aralor, he's just a saint. So D tier. Saint Felms the Bold is the Dunmary patron saint of butchers and fishmongers. A fierce warrior, he slew many Nord invaders and drove them from Morrowind. He could neither read nor write, instead being blessed by receiving inspiration directly from the lips of the tribunal, which again I utterly despise. Apparently, Sota Sil placed him in a black soul gem, driving him mad, D tier. Now Saint Jube became a saint after the tribunal was vanquished. You were on a boat with him when you first arrived on Morrowind. He got rid of those annoying cliff racers which plagued Morrowind since its inception. Unfortunately, he got demolished by Merun's Dagon and Kavach, and is doomed to wander the Soul Cairn. He honors the Sixth House and the tribe unmourned, and belongs in the S-tier with me. Saint Lothus the Pious is the Dunmary patron of tailors and dyers and the patron saint of house dress. Contemporary and companion of the tribunals, and the best-loved Alma Rula of the tribunal temple, he formulated the central rituals and principles of the new temple faith. Honestly, his devotion to the tribunal temple makes me sick. He belongs in the E-tier. Saint Maris the Peacemaker is the Dunmary patron of farmers and laborers. As a little girl, Saint Maris showed healing gifts and trained as a healer. She ended a long house war and basically brought the pacifist Kumbaya ideology to the houses or something. Insignificant Saint E-tier. Saint Seren the Merciful is the Dunmary patron saint of brewers, bakers, and distillers. Seren could heal all diseases at the price of taking the disease upon herself. Tough-minded and fearless, she took on the burdens of others and bore those burdens to an honored old age. She is your average Dunmer saint, but I'd admit I do like me a drink. D-tier. Ah, there you are, moon and star, Nerevar. You were betrayed at the Red Mountain by the false gods of the Tribunal, by your own wife, Almalexia. Come, Nerevar, come. Come to me through fire and war. Look upon the heart and bring me Wraithguard. I am in need of it. I am tempted to put you in F-tier for destroying the heart, but I will put you in the S-tier for old time's sake. Saint Olms, the Just, is the Dunmary patron of Chandlers and Clerks and the patron saint of House Indoral. Olms was the founder of the Ordinators and was responsible for conceiving of and articulating the fundamental principles of testing, ordeal, and repentance. Another false god saint. I can't necessarily put him in F tier because he is a Dunmer E tier. Saint Rilms the Barefooted is the Dunmary patron saint of pilgrims and beggars. Saint Rilms gave away her shoes, then dressed and appeared as a beggar to better acquaint herself with the poor. Her shoes are now a prized relic of the tribunal temple. Seems pointless in one of those old wives' tales. Once again, if you are a Dunmer that is connected to the Tribunal Temple, you get E-tier. Saint Rorus the Martyr is the Dunmary patron of furnishers and caravanners. Farm tool Argonians captured Rorus before the Arnesian War, and Argonian sorcerers subsequently tortured him for not renouncing his faith in the Tribunal. His death was the cause of the Arnesian War, as the Dunmer wanted justice and vengeance. All right, this one is a little bit more complicated. 
Yes, he is a saint of the tribunal, but tribunal is a Dunmer creation at the end of the day, and the fact that he stood up to those farm tools is admirable. See tier. Saint Veloth is a Kaima prophet that helped the Kaima separate themselves from the Altmer and brought them to the land of Resdain, known today as Morrowind. If it were not for him, we would not be where we are now. After his passing, he became the patron saint of outcasts and seekers of knowledge. He is the reason the Kaimer or now Dunmer are the superior people that we are, and we are eternally thankful to him. He is an S-tier saint and deity. Now that we are done with the Dunmery Pantheon, this is a good point to remind you to honor the sixth house and the tribe unmourned by performing the appropriate rituals. Moving on to the Altmer Pantheon. First, we have to talk about Oriel. He is the soul of Anuil, which is the soul of Anu. It is complicated, Nerevar. I am here to rank these false gods, not to dive deep into their origins. He is supposed to be the Altmer equivalent of Akatosh, but nothing is usually straightforward with these intersections. He played a role in the creation of the mortal plane, which made all elves mortal as a result. Now the Thalmor are trying to regain this immortality once again. A tier god, if he's not actually Akatosh. Lorcan, the dead god. He is also known as Shor or Shezar and many other names. An arrogant fool. He thought he could outsmart the gods. He failed. Now he is rotting in the void, but his heart still burns and I can harness its power. There are too many theories about him, but he did trick the Aedra into creating Mundus. Theories are that either Trinimac, Akatosh, or Oriel slew him, but no one knows for sure what happened to him. It is unknown if Masser and Secunda are his corpse. Either way, since I am benefiting from him, he belongs in the S-tier. Magnus is responsible for all the magic, and everything else that makes Mundus tick. Magnus, also known as the god of magic, the sun god, the great architect, he who abstained, and the sorcerer king, was a prominent Etada, one of the original spirits. During the Dawn Era, Lorcan persuaded Magnus and several other Etada to help create the mortal plane, Mundus. Magnus was said to have been the architect of Mundus as he created the schematics and diagrams needed to construct it. So basically, he is the reason why this world works the way it works. S-tier God. Finister the Guardian is the hero god of the Somerset Isles. While he is not part of the main Aldmeri Pantheon, his worship persists through significant cults throughout the province. He taught the Altmer to extend their lives a hundred more years simply by shortening their stride. Oh great, another Enwa god that made the High Elves live longer than they should. D-tier, Sirabane, the Warlock's god, is an Aldmeri god ancestor of magic who helped the mongrel dog Imperial Bendu Olo in attacking the Enwa Slode for causing the Thracian Plague that wiped half of Tamriel. As a result, the Thracian Plague was stopped and many lives were saved. For his contributions, I will give him a generous A-tier. Xarxes, also known as the Ageless One and the One Who Watches, is the god of secrets and hidden knowledge. He began as a scribe to Ariel and has kept track of all Aldmeri accomplishments, large and small, since the beginning of time. He created his wife, Ogma, from his favorite moments in history. Imagine being so lonely that you have to create your wife from a history book. His obsession with history kind of limits the scope of his powers. D-tier Yefri, or Jeffrey, or Yefer, the singer, the storyteller, the god of song and forest, and the spirit of the now, is the most important deity of the Enwa Bosmeri pantheon, also worshipped by the other Enwas, such as Altmer, Bretons, and Snow Elves. He, occasionally she, was one of the strongest of the recognizable spirits that crystallized shortly after the beginning of time, and played an essential role in the coalescing of the physical world during the Dawn Era. He is the god of stories or tales. Who knows, maybe he is a tale himself and did not really exist. Basically, he is the first spirit to become an Elnofe or Earth Bones and start the process of creation. Sometimes I fail to distinguish him from the Hist, but I will give him the benefit of the doubt and give him the A-tier. Oh, now we are moving to exclusively mongrel dogs of the Empire Saints and Deities. We start with Saint Alicia, the farm tool queen, that elevated humans or needies from farm tool status to Enwa status. Not much of an improvement, but she was responsible for putting an end to the Merethic era and establishing the First Empire, otherwise known as the Elysian Empire. She is also the reason eight of the nine divines are being worshipped by the mongrel dogs. 
Basically, it was her actions that caused the establishment of the mongrel dogs of the Empire later on, so for causing this butterfly effect, I give her the F tier. Kulakain, known widely as Emperor Zero, was an Enwa petty king of Falkreath, who sought to claim the Imperial City amidst the Interregnum, like many others at the time. So essentially, he is one of the reasons, other than Tiber Septim, why Morrowind got taken over by these Enwas. He was able to unite the Colovian estates with help from his prized general, Nord Enwa Hjalti Earlybeard, and his conquests were the progenitors of the third mongrel dogs of the Empire. He has since been memorialized by the cult of Emperor Zero, founded in his honor by his successor, mongrel dog of the Empire Tiber Septim, F-Tier. Morehouse is a winged minotaur, and despite his significance, you know how I feel about creatures such as these. He is the son of the false god of nature, Kinnereth, or Kine as the Enwa Nord barbarians call her. More like mistake of nature. Basically this man-bull, or wing miniature farm tool, helped Alicia in her rebellion against the Aeliads. What is even worse is that he and Alicia were lovers and had a farm tool son named Belhazara. I guess Alicia did not forget her farm tool origins despite being elevated to the Enwa level. Mora House goes to the farm tool tier, Pelinal Whitestrike, the Divine Crusader. This Enwa was the Terminator of Elves, the ultimate warrior that is said to have been from the future. As an elf, I really do not appreciate the fact that he indiscriminately obliterated each and every one. However, the Enwa Aeliads probably deserved it. He was so powerful that it took Umaril, the king and god of the Aeliads, a battle to the death to defeat him. The hero of Kavach later mantles him to defeat Umaril again. Overall, he's a human Enwa, just like the rest of them. He deserves to be an F-tier. Reman Cyrodiil is the mongrel dog emperor of the Second Empire. The human Enwas sure do like their emperors. He is revered as a god only because he stopped the Akaviri invasion and established a powerful empire. Not very impressive, even the false god of the tribunal Vivek managed to stave off demons from Akavir, F-tier god or saint or Enwa. Now we are talking about the One. There is a temple for him in the mongrel dog imperial city. The belief in the One came to fruition during the farm tool prophet Maruk, who propagated the belief in one single divine spirit. Who is the one, though? It could be Akatosh, it could be Lorcan, who knows? It's basically as silly as the belief in the Allmaker that the Skull have. This false god belongs in the F-tier. Now it is time to get some farm tool gods out of the way. Of course, some of them are not farm tool gods. This is a good time to remind you once again to honor the sixth house and the tribe unmourned by subscribing to my sermons, raising your thumbs and writing on the parchment down below. Farm tools belong to the Dunmer. Ban Dar, known as the bandit god, the man of a thousand faces or the pariah, is the trickster spirit that is worshipped by the farm tool Khajiit of elsewhere, but is known to have influence in places such as Valenwood. In his Kajiti aspect, the pariah manifests as the cleverness or desperate genius of the long-suffering Kajit, outplaying their mortal enemies, the humans and the elves. Due to his support of the Kajit, he belongs in the farm tool tier. Kunzari, or Zar for short, also known as the Laughing Lion, the Luminous Lion of Elsewhere, the Lunar Champion, the Joan Light Jaunter, and the Imprisoner of Dragons, was a mythic Khajiit hero and warrior who was active during the Merethic era. Some stories elevate him to the status of a god, or him being created by one. He is known for his many adventures. Some examples include his meeting with the Skuma Cat and the debaucherous Knight of 700 Paramours. He was most well known for capturing the demons who plagued the land of elsewhere by imprisoning them in the halls of Colossus. Long after his death, he is still worshipped for his heroic deeds within Kajidi shrines. He is just a false farm tool god that likes to party too much. Farm tool tier. Jakajai is a god in the Kajidi pantheon. He is also known as the Lunar Lattice. It is complex to explain this farm tool god, but he is responsible for these Kajit looking either more like farm tools or Enwas. Some of them do look like Bosmer because of how this god operates. However, he is still a farm tool tier god. We already spoke about Masser. Masser symbolizes the bounds of mortality. It is basically an attendant spirit of the mortal plane. It is also known as Jode or the Tear of Mara. There is also speculation that it is the corpse of Lorcan. It exists both in this dimension and outside of it. It is a complicated moon with divine aspects. 
I will give it the A tier. If you want a much deeper dive into these gods, write down your favorite pantheon on the parchment down below. Rajin the Purring Liar, also known as the Trickster God, the Footpad, Cat Who Walks, and the Cat King of Thieves, is the Thief God of the Kajidi people. He has seven shadows, each representing different aspects of his being. Another farm tool god, and all his seven shadows, are farm tools. Ridthar Ridata was the main of elsewhere during the early mid-second era. Ridthar Ridata is referred as the first main, a spiritual leader of elsewhere that paved the way for a moon-based culture and veneration for the cosmic deity of order, Riddlethar. I am not impressed by the Elsewhir to unite into a confederacy. They are a weak province plagued with poverty and crime. This main is a farm tool just like the rest of them. F tier. The lesser of Nern's two moons, Secunda, Joan, Shandar's Sorrow, or Stendar's Sorrow, is acknowledged as one of the attendant spirits of the mortal plane. And as such, just like Masser is both temporal and subject to the bounds of mortality. A tier. Moving on. Manny Marco is for some reason on this list. He is a false god, known as the Worm King. He is an Enwa Altmer Nercomancer with a big ego, just like the rest of them. During the Oblivion Crisis, he was portrayed as this powerful and formidable necromancer that should be feared. An Archmage even sacrificed himself in order for the hero of Kvach to defeat him. F. Tyr. The Night Mother is just a dried-up talking corpse and ghost. She is devoted to Sithis and receives contracts from the Void for those who perform the Black Sacrament. Basically, she is the mouthpiece of the Void and the Dreadfather Sithis. However, the Dark Brotherhood is also the sworn enemy of the Dunmer organization, the Morag Tong. So I will have to give the Enwa Mother the F tier. The Hist are the reason why the Farm Tool Argonians exist. They are also the reason why Morrowind was invaded during the Red Year. They are basically a network of trees that communicate with each other and transmit that information to the Argonian Farm Tool. Drinking a sap from his trees makes you see Enwas as goblins. They are no friends of the Dunmer. They should all be burned down. Farm tool tier. Alduin, the world eater. He believes that he is this superior being and takes the high ground by mixing dragon speech into Tamrielic. I cannot stand that. It's pathetic. He inadvertently saves the dragonborn who later is able to defeat him both on Mundus at the throat of the world and on Sovngarde. This Swit was easily defeated by even the Merun's Razor. Seriously, there was no need for a Dragonborn to defeat this Enwa. F tier. Mirak used to be a Dragon Priest, but now he is just a tool serving a mass of tentacles. He comes back to Solzheim and starts invading people's dreams and making them build shrines to him. Oh, great. Another bootleg version of myself. Then he decides to provoke the last Dragonborn and lure him into an epic battle in the Apocrypha. At the end of the battle, he gets impaled by a tentacle, leaving only a skeleton, while the last dragonborn absorbs his soul. F tier. Psy is the god of luck. Those familiar with him call him by his nickname, Lucky. He was born a mortal and had the talent to spread luck to others, but not to himself. He became a soldier, but he was killed in his first battle just as it was won. Ebonarm appeared to him and offered him immortality if he agreed to spread his luck around. So basically a false god that used to be an Enwa. Apparently worshipping him too much creates Sai's affliction. Sai have abandoned sufferers of the disease and long for the god's presence. They are driven to incessant gambling, seeking proof of the god's favor. This usually leaves the victim in poverty or debt. Well, this god is lucky enough not to be in the farm tool tier. F tier. Tsun is that Enwa god that the dragonborn meets while in Sovngarde. Tsun is the Atmaran god of trials and was one of Shor's or Lorcan's shield thanes, along with his brother Stoon. Overall, how could he defend Lorcan if the dragonborn can defeat him? F tier. Now it is time for the Red Guard Pantheon. We begin with Diagna. Diagna, also known as the Orichalc god of the Sideways Blade, was an avatar of the Hunding, the Yokudan god of Makeway, that achieved permanence as a Red Guard sword god. His hoary, thuggish cult originated in Yokuda during the 27 Snake Folk Slaughter. He was instrumental to the defeat of the left-handed elves, 
as he brought Orichalk weapons to the Yokudan people to win the fight. In Tamriel, he led a very tight-knit group of followers called the Order of Diagna, against the orcs of Orsinium during the height of their ancient power, but then faded into partial obscurity. I will give him the generous E-tier for fighting the orcs. Ryman Ebonarm, also called Ebonarm, or the Black Knight, is the god of war and the companion and protector of all warriors. He is said to ride a golden stallion named War Master, and is accompanied by a pair of huge ravens. Ebonarm's name refers to the ebony sword fused to his right arm, a result of the wounds he suffered in titanic battles of the past, and he is never seen without a full suit of ebony armor. Despite his appearance and name, he does have a pacifist kumbaya side to him. Overall, he is a freak of nature. I will give him the F-tier. The Hunding, also known as Hunding or the Makeway God, is the Yokudan spirit of perseverance over infidels. Even though the Red Guards are infidels themselves, what a grand and intoxicating innocence. The Hunding has historically materialized whenever the Red Guards need to make way for their people. Basically, he is a Karen God that cuts through lines. As mentioned before, his avatar was Diagna, which caused havoc both on Yokuda and Tamriel. F-tier. Leki, also known as the Saint of the Spirit Sword, is the goddess of aberrant swordsmanship and divine daughter of Tall Papa. The Na Totambu of Yokuda warred to a standstill during the mythic era to decide who would lead the charge against the left-handed elves. Their swordmasters, though, were so skilled in the best-known cuts as to be matched evenly. Leki introduced the ephemeral feint. Afterwards, a victor emerged, and the war with the Aldmer began. She is one of the most popular gods in Hammerfell. I don't see her as a real god, though. A warrior, maybe, but not a god. F-tier. Morwa, otherwise known as... Oh, never mind, Nerevar, I can't say all of it here. She's known as Lady Morwa, or Desire's Root. She's the Yokudan goddess of fertility and love. She is a fundamental deity in the Yokudan pantheon and is the favorite wife of Tall Papa. Morwa is always portrayed as four-armed so that she can grab more husbands. Her shrines are the shape of a beehive because, you know, birds and the bees. She is the lusty fertility goddess of the Yokudans, but not as lusty as Debella. She belongs in the same tier as Debella, though, which is the F tier. Ansi, also known as the Bone Shaver, is a notable warrior god of the Yokudan Ragada and a part of the Redguard Pantheon. Ansi is said to have taught mankind how to pull their knives into swords, curved swords, Nerevar, curved swords, so we can easily call him the false gods of curved swords, Eftir. Ruptga, more commonly Tall Papa, is the chief deity of the Yokudan and Redguard pantheon. He was the first god to figure out how to survive the hunger of Satakal. He has many wives and he is basically like Lorcan, but for the Redguards. All the gods that we talked about are dependent on him. Apparently, the Tall Papa lamp looks like your regular genie lamp, so rub it and Tall Papa is going to grant your wish. Seriously, what kind of name for a god is this? Sounds like a false god to me. F-tier. Satakal the Worldskin, also called the Serpent God and the World Snake, is the Yokudan god of everything, and a fusion of the concepts of Anu and Padome, Satak and Akal, or the habitable universe resulting of their interaction also called the Orbis, or the Grey Maybe. Driven by hunger to eat one world to begin another, Satakal also has much in common with the Nordic Alduin. This means that he is probably not as powerful as many portray him to be, and Tall Papa's ability to survive him isn't as impressive. F-tier. Teva, also known as the Lady of the Air, is the spirit of the air and goddess of weather in the Redguard pantheon and has dominion over all elements of sun and storm save only for the stars, which belong to Ruptga. Tava is most famous for leading the Yokudans to the Isle of Hearn after the deserved destruction of their homeland. She has since become assimilated into the mythology of Kinnereth. Oh great, this again. No, I've had enough of these false gods and goddesses claiming to be Mother Nature. Enough is enough, F-tier. Tuwaka or simply Tuwaka, the tricky god, is the Yokudan god of souls, the god of the far shores. Before the creation of the world, he was the god of nobody really cares. When Tall Papa undertook the creation of the walkabout, Tuwaka found a purpose. He became the caretaker of the far shores and continues to help red guards find their way into the afterlife. 
His cult is sometimes associated with R.K. in the more cosmopolitan Forbear regions of Hammerfell, where the names Tuwaka and R.K. are basically interchangeable. Oh, again, another Inwa like R.K. became a god and is now claiming to own the life and death cycle. What kind of nonsense is this, F-tier? Now we have the small Breton pantheon full of insignificant deities. We start with Druaga is the old goddess of flowers, worship of whom has all but died out. A festival named Guardtide is still held in her honor on the first of rain's hand every year by the people of Tamerlan Point, a coastal region of Menevia in central High Rock. F-tier, Eric Harad Egan, sometimes shortened to Eric, was the Altmer Archmagister of the Crystal Tower, believed to be alive sometime in the early mid-first era. His name is widely known and is synonymous with the likes of Moralin, the Witch King of Ebonheart, and Ebonarm, the God of War. According to the historical fiction King Edward, his name is implied to have significant weight, and so throughout the story, he is simply referred as the Archmagister. He is worshipped at altars in High Rock and Hammerfell. Another false god for the books, F-tier, Ryan is the Breton god of agriculture, with his associated temples being called the Conservatory of Rayan, and the associated knightly order being the Knights of the Field. Reliquaries of Rayan can be found across the Iliac Bay region. Praying to Ryan can result in one's navigational skills being increased. Apparently this false god Enwa is associated with Mara or something. He belongs with her in F-tier. We arrive at the limited pantheon of the Skull. Let's start with the Allmaker, which in my divine wisdom I think is basically the same hullabaloo as the one the Elysian Empire worshipped. Basically, he's the Skull version of Anu. He could have been an Enwa Atmaran god that was forgotten by everyone other than those Skull. They are also trying to spread the belief in the Allmaker on the mainland. He's also one of those nature-loving Enwa gods. How pathetic. They should just worship Anu instead of making up false gods. FTA. The adversary is the enemy of the Allmaker. He is the representation of Padme, stuck in the eternal battle with the Allmaker. He has an aspect named the Greedy Man. It's all very simplistic, F-tier. What, Nerevar? You're saying this tier list is simplistic? It's a tier list. If you want me to do much deeper dives, once again write your desires in the parchment down below. And I, the Sharmat, will respond. We now arrive at the core of existence, and where it all started, we begin with Padme, which is the darkness and came from the void, which was the starting point of everything. He is considered to be the brother of Anu. Padme was embittered by the love between Anu and Nir, which is the personification of Orbris, and sought to destroy their love child, Creation. He killed Nir and sundered Creation, but Anu salvaged the remnants, then saved them from further harm by pulling his brother and himself outside of time forever. Padme, like Anu, who we shall discuss soon, has a soul of sorts. Sithis, the dread father worshipped by those lunatics from the Dark Brotherhood, Pandemaic gods include the Daedra, and even Lorcan. Due to his power, I will give him the S-tier. Anu, or Anu, the everything, is thought to be the quintessential form of stasis, the anthropomorphization of one of the two primal forces, the other being Padome, change. He was in love with Nir, or Orbis. Their child was creation, which Pandome attacked, but Anu saved its remnants and banished himself and his brother outside of time. The blood of Anu and Pandame intermingled to create the Aedra. Anu personified his own soul into Anuil so that he might know himself, and Anuil's soul was in turn personified in Ariel, and that brings us back to Oriel and the Elven Pantheon. Overall, Anu is an S-tier god. Now let's talk about Orbis and its personification near. The Orbis is the name given to the chaos or totality from which Anu and Padme formed the cosmos. It is the universe for all intents and purposes, encompassing the void and all planes of existence from oblivion and the lands of Ethereus to Mundus and the outer realms. Nir is the source of creation. Anthropomorphized as feminine, she is said to have formed through the interaction of the primal forces of stasis and change, who are represented by Anu and Padme, respectively. In this story, while both are said to have fallen in love with Nir, she chose Anu over Padme and became pregnant. When Nir rejected Padme's confession of love, he became enraged and attacked her. 
Afterward, she gave birth to creation, but soon died from her injuries. So basically, Nerevar, the whole universe, was born because of a lover's quarrel, and because Sithis or Pandeme was too much of a crybaby to accept that his brother was better than him. I will give Aubris Estir. The Elon phase, or the Earth Bones, are the gods or Ateta that did not want to abandon Mundus and became mortal by basically renouncing their godhood. When Magnus, the architect, decided to flee Mundus, the Etaada split. Most followed Magnus, but the Elnafe are those that, as described above, sacrificed themselves into other forms so that they might stay in Mundus. What a grand and intoxicating innocence. Why would you give up your godhood? In any case, they became the ancestors of all Mur, and some of them even lingered until the Second Era. They are not exactly Anu or Pandame, so that I will put them in A tier. Minimo Li, or Minemoli the Blue Star, is a star, the most well-known Magna Ghi, children of Magnus, and a daughter of Magnus. She is associated with untime events, and she was said to be visible even in the daytime sky during the Dragon Break. She appears during Akatosh's retcons, and I hope she's disappointed in him. Mankar Cameron speculates that Nemeli and other Magna Ghe are responsible for creating Merun's Dagon in the bowels of Lig, a failed version of Nern. Nemeli, just like all Magna Ghe, are A-tier gods, and finally we arrive at Nern. Nern and Mundus are used interchangeably, and because creation is technically the son of Anu and Nir, Orbis, you could argue that it is a god within itself. It drifts in oblivion and could even be a plane of oblivion. While I cannot call it a god with certainty, if it were one, it would be an S-tier, as it is the place we all exist on, Nerevar. This is it for this sermon. I will need a lot of Sujama after this, and I will go rest in the Red Mountain. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to subscribe to my sermons. Raise your thumbs and write on the parchment down below, Pantheon Deep Dives. If you would like me to explore these gods in more detail, Thank you for your continued support. We are at over 11,000 sleepers, and each one of you honors the sixth house and the tribe unmourned. Next time I am awakened, I will bring it forth another sermon. I want to thank the scribes at the unofficial Elder Scrolls pages for documenting some of these Enwas. I also thank the sleeper Connor Runda for fixing my divine mistakes. I will see you in the next one.